everyone, I am Ching Yun. I am the artistic director of Fold Up at Young Pianist Academy, and we are so happy to see all of you today. We have with us a very, very special guest and someone very dear to my heart, and that is Seymour Bernstein. And Seymour is known for his um, wonderful books, wonderful music and recording. And, and for me, he is such a special mentor. He helped me at a stage of my life when I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and you know, he really helped me through. He taught me how to pay it forward, help, help the next generations of young pianists. And I must say that young, uh, Philadelphia Young Pianist Academy carries that thing and that I have uh, Seymour to thank for. And so um, for our classical encounter series, uh, we decided to have Seymour debuted uh, the, the very first interview, and I cannot think of a better person for that. So here is Seymour. Thank you, Ching Yun. I remember so distinctly our first meeting together. Yes. Of course, like everyone else, I was overwhelmed with your talent. But not only with your talent, but with you as a person. You know, our, you know what one of our goals in life is as being a musician? Yes. We have to make the musician and the person one and the same. Yeah. So that the music, the musician is not separated from their personal life. Mm -hmm. that is so we're going to discuss a lot about that. Yes, Simo, I have many questions for you. I know the audience members will have more questions for you. So here I go with the first one. Um, I have always been curious for, you know, for classical music, how did it start? Were your, did you, did you um, grow up with a musical family? How did all this music uh, come from? Well, it's, it's very mysterious how I started. Yes. Because no one in my family played the instrument. They were not even musical. I, my, one of my sisters sang a little bit, mm -hmm. sort of pop songs, not serious. My parents were unmusical and uh, uncultured. I was never taken to a concert. Mm -hmm. In short, I never heard a serious piece of music in my house. So now, I'm three years old, and my parents took me to visit my Aunt Ethel. Okay. And I went into the living room, and there was a big black box with white teeth. And I went over to it, and I took, put my finger up, and I touched the white note, and it went, bing! <laughs> and would you believe it? When I heard that sound, I said, in, uh, even at three years old, this is my life. Wow. Something clicked in my head. So then when I was, we didn't have a piano when I was six years old. Yes. Someone gave us an old upright player piano mm -hmm. and my mother, didn't know how to get me a piano teacher. So the milkman came in one day to deliver milk. And my mother said, do you know of a good piano teacher? And he said, oh, my daughter teaches. <laughs> and that's how Rita Roby became my first piano teacher. Wow. Well, I was so adept. I was, I think maybe I was a prodigy, but I'm not I'm sure. sure. I'm sure. not sure. But whatever she told me, it seemed to me I already knew about it, but I was reading so quickly, she couldn't keep up with me. She kept replacing the books all the time. Yeah. So one day on a Sunday morning, my family were all sleeping. You know, I had three older sisters. Did you know that? I think I read in your book, no? <laughs> yes, so they were all sleeping on the second floor. Yeah. And I was at the piano and I opened the book and there was Schubert's Serenade. And wow. when I played it, 
I started to cry. I said, oh my goodness, I know this piece. Now, how could I have known that piece? I never heard it before. My mother came down, why are you crying? Mother, it's the most beautiful piece I ever heard. And I just wept from sobbing. Now that's the story of the beginning of my career. Now, what, how do you conclude anything like that? I, I have- Jing, <laughs> Jing Young, you know from your own self yeah. and from teaching, it's genetic. Your genes are already set up for it. It's nothing that you can train to do. You're born being a musician. I, I almost have a feeling that it started with your previous life and it carries over. So we'll, well, some, over. well, some people believe that. Yeah. Otherwise, how do you explain this kind of passion, you know, this love when you hear music for the first time, that it does something so strong to you and as such a young child. Oh, and well, the other thing, go, go ahead, sorry. Well, you know, there's a book called Music and the Brain, and it's a group of articles by neurosurgeons who have examined everything that you just said. How is it that we're sensitive emotionally and even intellectually to musical sounds? Mm -hmm. And they have discovered that there's a part of the brain which is enlarged at birth and our musical talent resides there. But there's bad news. There's bad news about it. If it isn't enlarged at birth, it never gets enlarged. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So unfortunately, the people who have a small area, they can always get better than they are, right? Mm -hmm. But they can't reach a certain pinnacle. Oh, wow. That, that's they, they, they can only they can only imitate. So that's better than not doing it properly, right? Even to imitate is all right. Yeah. Haven't you discovered that in teaching? That no matter how many times you tell a pupil something, mm -hmm. they don't get it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we get this question a lot from, especially from parents, how do you instill love and passion and appreciation for a, a child that's practicing eight hours a day, you know, or how to involve themselves a little bit more when playing a piece of music, you know, the mm. content, the emotional content. But, of but you see, if it isn't programmed genetically, it never will be there. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Not, not, we don't want to disencourage anyone uh, learning music. I think learning music is always good. No, uh, listen, wait. no, on, on the contrary, everybody has to be encouraged with no matter how much talent you have. Mm -hmm. The only important thing about developing properly is that you get a little better. Yeah. Nothing else is required of you. You're not to be in competition with you or Horowitz or anyone. Yeah. You just have to go only as far as your talent is able to go. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. And come and be at peace. You have to help the pupil to come to be at peace about that. Mm. They'll um, say, well, I can, I can never, I can't play it as fast as you can. And you should say it's all right. Yeah. You don't have to play it at my tempo. Play it at your own tempo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. I know I'm uh, uh, deviating a bit from our original question, but I do want to ask you because um, nowadays you hear from young pianists a lot. They say, they said, um, I. You ask them what you want to do in the future, and why are you? practicing eight hours a day and what is it that you desire and oftentimes you hear oh, that, well, that that's what I ask my pupils in a master class yeah and the, the, the most thing I hear a lot is I want to become so and so I want to become a superstar I want to be so famous how, how do you what what do you think about that as one's goal is to be 
become famous, famous pianist. All right. Well, if if that's the only goal, then they may or may not become famous, but they will never be great artists. Never. They will be very efficient and they'll get engagements. There are people who have major concert careers. They don't really say anything. They're not great artists. So it's up to you to instill in your pupils the ultimate goal for studying music. And that's why I wrote my book with your own two hands. Yes. I, I, you asked me, one of your questions that you told me about yeah, yeah. is of all the books that I wrote, which one would I recommend? Well, in that book, I state very clearly what the ultimate goal is in studying music. Mm. And the goal is not only to become a better musician, mm -hmm. but a better person. Get it? Yeah. A better person. Okay. Yeah. So now... We all know that life influences the way we study music, right? Yes. Everybody knows that. But what people don't know is that the way you practice and perform influences your life. Yeah. So I discovered that when I was 15, when I was practicing very well, Everything else that I did seemed harmonious. Mm. My, my life in school, with my friends, with family. Mm -hmm. If my practicing didn't go well, mm -hmm. I was very bad in school. And I was not a very good friend to my friends. I, I felt negative about life. Mm. So I realized right then and there that music is determining my life. I, I totally understand that. Don't you agree? Completely, yes. But you know, most musicians don't know that. You know, my teacher, Clifford Curzon, mm -hmm. he said when he, I told him I was writing a book about this, he said, how strange, Seymour because I try to keep my social work life separated from my musical life. Mm. In fact, he used the word uncontaminated. Oh. He wanted to keep his social life uncontaminated from his musical life. Oh. So he didn't want the musician and the person to be one and the same. And guess what? Guess what? Right. He's gone now. I, I've lost him, of course. Right. But yeah. he wasn't a very normal person. He why was a, did, why a very yeah. a, a, a very divided person musically and, and personally. Mm. So this is very important that your pupils understand that the study of music and the performance of it, not only to study, you have to be able to perform it. It integrates your personality. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. No, that, that, that is so beautiful. That, that, that's, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. And that's, you know, my that's mother, like Confucius. Yeah, that's why my mother calls Seymour <laughs> Confucius. First time she met Seymour, she said, like, wow, this is a, uh, someone with such great wisdom and where Simo, can i ask you where 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 does the, all this is, is this wisdom did you have mentors that throughout your life that meant great deal to you and you know formed your beliefs like you you help with mine i really discover many many things by meeting you i have to tell yeah i have to tell you sweetheart I studied with some of the greatest artists in the world. Mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking for me to tell you. 
Clifford Curzon was the most important, but none of them mentored me. And I think it's partly my fault. In a, in a good way, it's partly my fault because I worked so hard and I played so well for them that they didn't think I needed any help. You know, they didn't think I needed any technical help mm -hmm. and I needed a lot of technical help. Mm -hmm. So that's because I worked so hard. I fooled them. So mostly I have to tell you, I think this is also, this you're going to agree about yourself. I think you and I are mostly self-taught. I I um, I really I'm grateful for all my teachers, like like you, and uh, sometimes it's um, wisdom outside of music. It's life. I almost feel like this mentor mentorship. It's not just um, it's not just about the music. It's it's everything in life. Well, honey, music. Then wait a moment, just a moment. You know, to a serious musician, music is not part of our life. It you, is our life. It is our life, yeah, that's true. Music is our life. Our life without music would be no life to a musician. Mm, yeah. So you have to understand that if you start on that premise, then you realize that everything you do when you sit at the keyboard is going to affect everything else that you do. Mm -hmm. yeah, very true. This is a very, very vital thing. So you pass on to your students all of this wisdom and I passed on to you some of the musical wisdom that I learned from my teachers mm -hmm. who were related to Beethoven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you know that you were related to Beethoven be through me? I feel tremendously honored. <laughs> <laughs> do you, did you know how? I do. Do you, well, you have to tell your pupils they're related to Beethoven through you. That's great. Here's what, here's what happened. Beethoven taught Czerny. Czerny taught Lechetitsky. Lechetitsky taught a pianist by the name of Alexander Brylovsky. Mm -hmm. And he taught me mm -hmm. five times removed. And I taught you, you're six times removed from Beethoven. So my students are seven times removed from Beethoven. They should be extremely happy to hear that. <laughs> They're seven times removed. That's just so great. you know. From now on, I'm going to call you Ludviga. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's another thing about Seymour is his humor, is is so sharp and so wonderful. You know what? Listen, Jin Young. <laughs> It's very important to mix seriousness with humor at lessons. Yeah. When you and I had lessons together, we laughed half of the time. Yes. And the seriousness became even more serious. Yeah, that's right. It's all about life. Um, Seymour, so you are, you are a wonderful mixture of seriousness and good fun. That's why I love to make jokes with you. <laughs> yeah, outside, yeah, we have so much fun, <laughs> so much fun.